Okay, this episode is about heating water using the sun. I'm going to show two different methods that you can use when you're boondock camping. Uh, the one method I've used quite a bit, uh, especially if you have like a shower uh, tent, which I have. Um, you get one of these clear, they're initially they're clear two and a half gallon containers. And what you're going to do is you're going to paint it black so it absorbs more solar radiation. But before you paint it, this one has a handle here. Um, put a couple strip of uh, tape along the front handle. This way, when you paint it, it won't paint that section. And then after it dries, you peel off the paint. And this way you can, as you're taking your shower, you can watch the water level going down. So keep, leave that clear so you can see that. And this has a standard uh, spigot. So if it's up on a shelf, you could do gravity fed if it's up, in, you know, up on a shelf or something. Or what I was using was a 12-volt uh, uh, water pump, which I put right inside here. Um, so anyway, you don't have to you fill it up with water, leave it out in the sun a couple hours. And what the other thing I did here other than paint it black is I put one of these uh, meat thermometers uh, drill the hole put a meat thermometer in the top so I can uh, monitor the temperature of the water now right now it's like at 112 degrees uh, but there's no water in, in there yet um, it's just the sun heating up everything so that's one method, very easy method. Like I say, they do have 12 volt uh, water pumps, uh, which you stick the pump in here, and you're running it off a little 12 volt battery. I used to have a little 5 amp 12 volt battery, and then that will pump it up in your shower tent or whatever. Uh, uh, those kits, I think, around 20 bucks, and it has the shower head, it has the hoses, and, and the pump. They're, not, they're very inexpensive. Okay, that's one way. Another way, which I'm experimenting with, is uh, this is a 12 volt heater, double element, 300 watts. And um, what you're doing is it works on 12 volt DC. And I'm running it directly to. Uh, a 20 watt panel right now you don't have to run a charge controller or anything you're not charging a battery this has its own resistance actually I checked the resistance so you don't have to worry about a short you know uh, connected it directly in line with your solar panel positive and negative but you can hook it up in either direction um, it doesn't matter this is not polarity driven and I'm reading just with the 20 watt panel, I've got this hooked up in, as an amp meter. So you have to hook it up in series when, you, when you're checking amps. It's, um, it's giving out 1.2 amps, this little 20 watt panel. So this is rated to handle 25 amps, up to 25 amps. And you really want to be pumping a lot of amps through this to get it hot enough. You're going to... You can drop it right into one of these five gallon containers to heat up that water there. Uh, this type of igloo, six gallon, it's, this nozzle's too small for this to fit in there. Um, this is filled with water and um, uh, I'm not worried about a short. I've, I've dumped it in there a couple times. So you're only dealing with a very low voltage. So, and fresh water is not a very good electrolyte. So the odds are the current's not going to flow across these leads. I mean, like I say, I've, I've, done, I've dumped it down in, in the five gallon container a couple times. And um, no issues, the current didn't change on my meter or anything. But to get this thing super hot, you're going to want to get it closer to its 25 amp rating. So if you had 400 watts of solar, that would be putting out over 20, 22 amps. Would be pumping through this if you put uh 400 watt panels in parallel you should be able to get at least 20 amps out of it then this sucker is going to work really good 
And what you could do, it actually would probably heat the water up so hot, uh, I would put a thermostat in series as, to adjust the temperature, your water temperature. So um, that's a pretty cool device. That was like 20 bucks. Uh, very easy to hook up. So that's a, a method I'm experimenting with. Like I say, I haven't had any shorts or anything drop, drop, dropping that straight in the water. It's actually designed, if you see the threads here, it's designed to thread onto a pipe. So that'd probably be a way, okay, you, if you could screw this into a pipe, then you're not putting this in the water. That's probably how it was originally designed. Um, and then the pipe, you'd want to run it like a feedback loop with the water and then have a drain where you can drain the hot water out of the pipe piping system. You, you know, um, I, I didn't draw a schematic to tell you how to do that. But the other simple method, um, if you're running just a small, you know, 12 volts, I don't think you're going to have to worry about dropping it even straight in the water. Because I've done it a couple times. It didn't do anything. Uh, here's another thing. Uh, now we're checking the amps. These, a lot of these panels are very sensitive to shade. Okay. Now, I'm going to go sideways with this. I'm going to put my hand. Okay, we're at 1.2 amps. I'm just going to put my hand lightly over here. And you can see it's already dropped down to 0.6 amps. And all I've got is my, oh, my hand here. 0.45. And if I remove my hand, you're back up to 1.2 amps. So they're very, just a little bit of shade on your panels, some of these panels, and it cuts them off. Uh, matter of fact, if I put my arm this way, lengthwise, let me get in closer. Um, we're at 1.2 amps. I'm going to run my arm down lengthwise. Look at it, it's dropped down to 0 0.07 amps. That's, that's seven hundredths of an amp. That's, and all I've done is shade that one little corner there. So this, these cells are in series. So if one cell gets cut off its shade, it's cutting off all the other uh, cells. So it literally doesn't produce any amperage, with just a little bit of shade. As you can see, I'll do this again. So you can see my hands over there. Now I'll move it away, watch what happens. So it went all the way back up to 1.2 amps again. Um, so that's a poor design in my opinion to make a panel like that they should really uh it's like the old christmas lights they used to be in series and if one light went out on the christmas string on your tree all the other lights would go out that's a series connection and then they started making them in parallel so if one light bulb went out on your christmas lights it wouldn't turn off all the other lights but that's how this panel's made i don't like that overall design uh now I'll give you another idea how sensitive they are to angle. As I go straight up perpendicular, we've already dropped less than an amp. We go this way, we get the critical angle, 1.2 amps, uh, 1.22. Now it's starting to drop again as I go further and further to a horizontal position. And when it's completely horizontal, we're down to uh, 0.86 amps, which isn't terrible. That, you know, a lot of times when I'm in a windy area, I leave them flat like this so they, because the wind can kick up some places in the desert, it can get up to 70 miles an hour, and they'll flip these over and they'll hit a rock or something and break. So I leave them flat a lot of times. You're gonna lose some amps, but in this case, it's not losing that much compared to the the perfect angle which would be your latitude uh, angle match your latitude if you're pointing directly at the sun or if you're going to leave them in one position all day latitude plus 10 degrees works for if you're, if you're leaving the panel in one position all day okay uh, I think if I wanted to say anything else uh, 
Okay, the other thing about this element, uh, you can work it as a dump charge, as they call it. Uh, there is a way on some charge controllers that after the charge controller senses your battery bank is completely full, let's just say it senses it's completely full at 1 o'clock in the afternoon, then you can run a dump charge and what that does instead of the charge controller turning off or going into a trickle mode you know after the battery banks full you can run full amperage from your solar panels continue that to a dump dump load so this would work great for heating up your water after your battery charger or your charge controller uh, has charged up your batteries and then have this in some type of a you know hook up in the water so it starts to dump the full solar panel array charge into the water for, as a water heater. So then later on you can take a hot shower or, or if you like hot water for you, uh, doing your dishes or whatever. So that's another idea where this could come in. Is it what they call a dump load and be utilizing uh, the solar energy all day long, even after your batteries are fully charged. Okay, uh, I think that's all I wanted to explain uh in this episode two methods of heating up water using the sun and this is eagle eric out in the coconut